All right, so somehow I have a question for you right at the beginning. So let me, let me say something about where, where we've been and what we've been talking about. A, a week or so ago, a couple of weeks ago, we started talking about momentum. And this idea that if there are forces acting on something, then those, so interactions with the outside world, then the momentum of an object can be changed. If all of those forces add up to some net force, then the momentum's going to change of this object, which means its velocity will change. That's a, trans, that's talking about translational motion. Translation's where you move something through space. Um, but, but since we also have rotations as one of the possibilities, we've added in uh, uh, a, an analogous but, but new set of ideas uh, to take care of rotational motion. So we defined the angular momentum or rotational momentum to depend on the angular speed, that's the little Greek letter omega with a vector over it, and the right hand rule tells us how to find the direction of the angular speed, namely if the right hand rule with your thumb perpendicular, if your fingers are pointing along the direction of the rotation, then your thumb points along the direction of the angular velocity vector, which is always along the axis. The angular velocity vector is along the axis of rotation, and so that's always perpendicular to the, to the motion of the thing. How do you change, in, in, a, in a way, in the same way that interactions with the outside world, by way of forces, can cause the momentum to change, interactions with the outside world, and, and we uh, measure those interactions by, by something we call torque, uh, is what you need to change angular momentum. So if there are no interactions with the outside world, so there's no net force and no net torque, then momentum and angular momentum are constant. So if you pick a physical system which has negligible in interactions with the outside world, then that angular momentum and the momentum of that physical system will stay the same. This torque, uh, the, the construct that we use to measure the interaction with the outside world in terms of rotations, in terms of changing the orientation of an object, this idea of torque, the, the torque depends on the force. So if there's an interaction with the outside world that we model with a, a single force, then that force will have a, a torque that we can calculate. Torques as well as angular momenta are always about some pivot point. Pick a pivot point calculate angular velocity around that pivot point or torque around that pivot point. So, so part of what you have to do is, is pick a kind of ideal pivot point. Um, sometimes there's a point where, where the object isn't moving at all. That's an actual pivot point. Like if I rotate this thing, it's not moving about that axle through the center. And so that's an actual pivot point. This thing can, can rotate, but only about that fulcrum right there where this thing touches. So again, that's an actual pivot point. It does pivot about that point. That point is, is fixed, unless I do something really weird that causes this thing to go up and fly through the air. The the, I guess the only thing I have left to say is that I, the rotational inertia, is a sum over all the masses times the distance the mass is from the pivot point squared. 
So these R's here are all vectors from a pivot point to some other location. For torque, R is a vector from the pivot point to where the force is applied. For rotational inertia, you're adding up the iner rotational inertia of a bunch of masses, and R is the, the vector R is from the pivot point to wherever the mass is located that you're trying to add on. For instance, nearly all of the mass of, of this tire is in this solid rubber wheel. The, the spokes are fairly light, some of the mass is in there, but a lot of it, most of it, in fact, is in this wheel. And this wheel, the, the rubber part of this wheel, is approximately a constant distance, in fact, the radius of the wheel nearly, from the center. And so, since the distance of all of the pieces of mass that are important of that wheel is the same r, just the radius of the wheel, then when I sum them all up, if I did this wheel, it would just be the total mass of the wheel times its radius squared. Um, your, your bike tires, your bike wheels are, are even more so that the, that the mass is in the outside and not so much mass in the spokes. All right, so on to this question. Ice skater on frictionless ice. So the only reason I choose an ice skater is so that, is so that I can let this ice skater just move along in a straight uh, horizontal direction with uh, no change in momentum uh, except something happens. She's skating along and there's a pole in the ice rink and she reaches out and grabs a hold of it. Uh, and, then, and then she starts swing, swinging around the pole, and again, let's make the pole uh, interaction with her hand no friction. So there's nothing trying to stop her from, from spinning around. So this, this question is, is mostly, how do you describe what's going on? 